<laughs> we, oh, James, don't talk about that. No one knows about that. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This week, I spoke to James Hillier, who is an Isle of Man TT racer. He's had a lot of success around there and also one of the most chilled out and laid back racers you'll speak to. So it always baffles me that he races around the Isle of Man TT at 200 mile an hour and he's relaxed as he is. So I hope you enjoy the interview. If you do like the video, feel free to like it and subscribe to the channel. It looks like we'll still be in lockdown for the foreseeable future. So there'll be a few more episodes to come. So make sure you don't miss out on them. So here he is, I'll get him on the phone. It's my hair, have you done your hair? Uh, yeah, can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> um, I risked one haircut with Taz and uh, it gave me a rash from the, cause he'd used the clippers on the dog. And oh. then I'd, I've not gone back since. <laughs> So today I wanted to talk about, um, obviously a lot of track day riders have the big choice between a 600cc bike and a 1000cc bike. You've raced at the TT for a lot of years on both bikes and the lightweight class as well. So I just wanted to give people a bit of an insight into what you think about each bike. So my first question is you've had a lot of success on lightweight bikes at the TT um, as you have on the big bikes as well. Is there a bike you prefer to ride around the Isle of Man? Um, probably, if I had to pick one race to do, it would probably be the Superbike. Um, although it's, that would scare me the most, you know, it's the scariest. It, 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 um, it's a little bit more forgiving. And um, the 600, you really have to, like, squeeze every tiny last bit out of it. And... Um, probably I would say take a few more risks in the corners like maybe push the tyres a little bit more to carry that momentum um, uh, yeah so I'd, I would probably choose the super bike on, on, on the road circuit but on the short circuit I would probably choose a 600 would you? Hmm. I was, what about you? Would, well would you, yeah I, was a, I didn't realise when I was racing 600s because I raced them for about 3 years I thought it was just going to be bigger and faster and scarier on a superbike or a thousand cc, but when I first got on one, I actually preferred it because you kind of take a step back and you can't ride them as aggressively as a six hundred, and I found it a bit easier. Whereas when I raced a six hundred, I felt like I was trying so hard all the time to squeeze everything out of it, like you said. That when I got yeah. on a thousand, I had to try and think about it a bit more. It, it, I preferred it, but I guess at the TT, the last thing you want to be doing is squeezing. A little bit more out of a yeah, bike. Yeah, I think with a superbike and the, that much more power, you just have a little bit more feel with that extra power through the tire, so you kind of know where you're at a little bit. Whereas the six hundred, the less power, it kind of you get those horrible snap like yeah. slides where it's nothing, it's a lot happening, and then it goes. Whereas yeah. a big bike, you can use the power to feel the grip more. Yeah, on a six hundred, you tend to you go faster and faster and faster and it doesn't really have enough power to have big slides and then when it does have one it's because it's yeah. going wrong yeah. and you don't want to be doing that no. uh, at the TT so I, I, I probably in, to round it up you get a little bit more feel of where you're at with a super bike yeah your moment at the TT is my favourite all time <laughs> moment I think of <laughs> nearest misses ever yeah, um, yeah. so <laughs> my, my question based on that was is it harder or easier We've kind of covered it already, but is it easier to ride a 600 round there or a 1,000 when you have moments like that? Do you still have moments like that on a 600? Probably not as much, no. Or not yet, anyway. Um, that was a bit of out, that was a bit of, uh, out the ordinary, that, that moment at Balagheri at the TT in 17. Um, uh, because, you know, it's not... I, I don't wouldn't say I ever really have moments like that on a... On a big bike um or a 600 that was a bit a bit peculiar but uh and what yeah, happened think, in that well like, um i had a suspension issue with uh something failed and um nothing broke or snapped but it was a, a damping issue which um it just lost all its damping basically so right. um and that was probably probably one of the worst corners for me to find out <laughs> <laughs> but um, and it, but it, it, yeah, I thought initially I thought I'd just got something wrong or caught 
you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, really baffling. And um, and then shortly after, there's another another jump, Crosby jump, which again is like sick gear fast, and um, it went into another wobble, not as bad, but it was not normal. And um, at that point, I thought, screw this, you know, I'm, I'm rolling off a little bit, and uh, and just continued round. I think we dropped right back and to like tenth, tenth, and I thought. I just ride the thing to finish. It was no way was it in a um, in a state to be pushing on, you know. And uh, and then when we stopped, they re- they stopped the race later on. That's when Hutchie crashed, I think, that year, possibly or something. And um, they uh, I bounced on the bike, and it was just like a bare spring. So it was it was nice to have the the to know what caused it. Yeah, yeah. To be able to then close your and then restart again and confidence yeah. and yeah and also knowing that it wasn't my fault it's also good it's nice yeah. to blame someone Somewhere else, else. <laughs> yeah that happens a yeah. lot in racing you as long as you know what happened it's yeah. not that bad it's when you have a crash where you don't know why it happened and then that's when things are in the back of your mind <laughs> like then. you in a testing <laughs> <laughs> James don't talk about that no one knows about that <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> no people do I mean, we had a slight uh, well for people that weren't there obviously probably the most I'd say the most embarrassing thing that's happened to me on a track day yet, me and James were riding around and it was our first, it was start of this year, first session, well not, first day back on the bike, I was pumped and me and James were just riding around and I've just lost the front for no reason whatsoever and we still really haven't got the bottom of it and now there's a corner at Almeria that I don't go around ever again because there was some, and I spooked you as well, I think, at the yeah. time. Because yeah. I was doing exactly the same speed line, and and um, and you crashed here, yeah, and I didn't luckily <laughs> for me. But it was like it was. That's the worst thing is a crash when you don't understand. You know, yeah. if you can, you know, there's no, there's never real positives to take from a crash other than the fact that you to learn and not do it again. You know, and yeah. uh, certainly on track days, you see, you know, I, we've both done quite a lot of instructing, and you see so many crashes that could have been avoided by people just sort of well yeah a lot of crashes are unavoidable aren't they yeah that was a classic uh me not listening to all the advice i've ever been given and given to other people (laughs) just take your time on the first day there's four days you're here in spain (laughs) whatever you do don't wreck your bike on the first day because you need to ride it for another four i've never ran to a bike well i've never hung on to a bike for as long as that and then i've never ran to pick one up as fast as i did and then i was the classic track day rider scrounging around the pits Asking for yeah. bits off everyone, Parts but and, yeah, I managed to get back out. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. What made you want to go to the TT in the first place? Um, do you know, as, a, as an event, it's probably, and I can see why a lot of people, riders don't really want to do it because it is dangerous. But the, what, what probably planted the seed was when I first went there when I was little and uh, I was 11. And, um, walking around the paddock and uh, seeing the, the racers there in their leathers now, they were just like, it was just incredible. That was sort of, I thought, I want to do, I want to be like that, you know, and uh, I want to be, I want to do do this one day somehow. And, and, and yeah, probably probably that really, you know, I just got an idea and, and, and worked at it and, and it paid off. But it, the history, I think, is probably a big part of it also. To try and be part of that is um, not not that I want. I don't know. It's just like a, a bug, and it's almost because it's so crazy. You know, when someone says almost you can't do something, it makes you want to do it more. And I think yeah. that's probably a little bit of that. Something you, it's, it's, um, yeah. But it's certainly, I certainly don't have any regrets. I just um, it just makes normal life pretty boring. You know, when uh, once you've done that, then then it's very hard to get anything else near it really. yeah I, uh, that's what I had in my mind then is that for you now when you come and race on a short circuit like I get a real buzz on a short circuit but I imagine for you it's tame now compared to when you first ever went on a short circuit yeah 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 it doesn't really that's probably why I don't do a lot of short circuit racing is because I it doesn't really get me going you know I quite enjoy going out on my enduro bike I quite enjoy that get sort of uh, excites me a little bit but um, riding around around Donington Park or somewhere 
it doesn't really do it for me I don't think um not saying I wouldn't like to do it, but, you know, I quite enjoy riding older classic bikes and stuff, something a bit different, which I guess then adds a little bit of excitement because you can't always predict them quite so much. Yeah. Uh, you don't know what's going to... Like, uh, the Goodwood uh, Revival's a great event, and, uh, you know, I look forward to that. Um, and again, that track actually is a little... You wouldn't want to ride a modern bike around there because there's not a great amount of runoff. Maybe that's why I enjoy it, because it's a little bit more of a road racey short circuit, you know? Yeah. And the Thunderdome yeah. at the London XL oh, yeah. Arena, that was probably the most dangerous I've ever seen you look on a bike. <laughs> and I was glad to be a part of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was the only race we'd done this year, wasn't it? I'm and, uh, glad we got that in the bag when we did, really. And um, we certainly made the most of it, didn't we? Yeah, I think that was more dangerous than the TT, in parts. <laughs> I've never seen Pete Hickman ride a bike like that in my life either. <laughs> Or oh, John McGuinness. I've never seen John McGuinness so angry. No. <laughs> is there a key to the perfect lap at the TT, or have you ever managed one, or is that not possible? Um, it's definitely possible. As long as there's no back markers and you, you know, it's just down to not making mistakes. But it's a lot harder, you know. Even on a on a short circuit with. 12 corners or 15 corners it's very hard to get a perfect lap so yeah. when there's two 200 corners then uh, or more 200 plus then it's very very hard but I think the, the key to a I wouldn't say perfect lap the key to a very good fast lap is um, obviously bike setup is is key um, good weather and, and not just on the day like the year that all the records were broken we had a whole fortnight of strong weather and the track just got grippier and grippier um, so good weather on the day and leading up to with a good amount of track activity before for, for the grip to clean the track really. Um, and, and you need to be in again, also in the sort of right frame of mind because you, you don't want to be riding around there angry or, or chasing the, um, excuse me a sec. <laughs> um, it's, um, I'm actually in my lad's room, so he's he's come back <laughs> to sort of, and I'm taking over. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think cool headed, like the right frame of mind, and not not just in that right zone. You know, I haven't gone for I I did my fastest lap in 2015, and I haven't been I haven't been faster since. You know, and that was on the old models at X10 in a four lap sprint race, senior TT, and uh, you know, I, I think me as a rider, I. I my ability is, is better now. The bike I had is better, but it hasn't come together enough to, to, to beat better that. You know, I've definitely got faster laps in me, but um, I haven't pulled them together yet. So it's, yeah, it's not easy for sure. But, you know, even Hickman's record lap, you know, there was problems, if there was errors and, and issues in that lap that held him up. And do you, I guess at the TT, because experience is such a massive part of it, because you get limited laps and limited amount of time on the track and you only race there once a year do you just feel like you could go faster because you know the track better every year or did you get to a point where you know the track and then it's just you're riding um there's sections where you know the track so you're just riding and then i find each year i kind of another section will kind of come up where i need to work on a little bit or i feel like i'm being a bit of a pansy you know i need to just roll a bit later or not break so much and try and carry a little bit more speed which um, you kind of build up and the other thing the harder thing and this happens even on a short circuit you kind of do a turn I, I call it at the TT like your self-preservation you know your body's saying oh slow down you shouldn't be doing this and you kind of you that kicks in you slow down too much and you think as soon as you get on the gas you think god I've gone too late you know or I could, I could have break later or gone drove, driven sooner um, and you think next lap I'll get it and because the lap's so long by the time you come back around again you forget and then you, as soon as you leave that section you're like, you're like, <laughs> like why did I do that and, and you know it can, that little little tiny thing can, can make up a good few seconds on the next straight you know just yeah. by carrying that little bit extra speed so it's, it's so crucial to kind of be, be sharp you know I think I think I have an opinion. I have a sort of opinion or theory that a lot of people think that TT races are, are a bit mad, and well, obviously we've got to have a little bit of madness, but almost a little bit dumb. But I think you have to be quite switched on and tactical, and definitely, and, yeah, 
to, to think things, a lot of stuff through to kind of to bring it all together, you know. And also clever enough to sort of roll if it's not happening or, you know, like, like when I had that problem with the bike, I, I rolled off and, you know, you have to be able to kind of know when to go and when not to go and, and be sort of relatively mature. I don't know if, that's, if that sounds... sounds now, right. I've met quite a lot of TT racers, James, and I don't know anyone that's mature. <laughs> no, yeah, wrong word. Yeah. Um, change the subject. <laughs> Another question I've got that baffles me is, you know, at the start of the, when you're lining up to race and there's the board that says it's damp at such and such corner, halfway around yeah. the track. When you're approaching that corner, do you remember that it's damp or is that? Yeah. 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 And, you, and, and um, I think, I think with a lot of years as well, having done it, you get like a bit of a feeling anyway. Do you know if one section is going to be damp, you know, where else will we damp after yeah. that? If, as such, if it's been drying. But there's other races where it's been spots of rain and because the lap's so long, that moves around. So you don't ever actually know, you know, if you could ride through rain, that's a, a, a shower that's coming towards you, you know. So you could go through the rain, the rain stops and you think, OK, or I say rain, mist, like drizzly rain, you know, not heavy rain at all. Um, it, the rain, that could stop, but the track you're then riding onto could have already had that. So yeah. It, it might not actually be raining, but it could still be wet. So you, you're using everything, even that kind of wet tarmac smell. You get your senses are real alive, so you're kind of using everything to kind of. Um, that's the only other funny thing with with the TT because your brain is like working at such a mad speed. Your senses are, are sort of thriving, and um, you smell the barbecues and cigarettes and weed and like garlic there's a section um between ginger horn ramsey where you can smell the wild garlic and weird things yeah you just that you you probably don't really realize at the time but looking back you kind of pick up on stuff you don't really probably don't really need to yeah that's bizarre I don't, the only um it's funny you said that because i've never thought of it like that but places like alton park where it's wet under the trees or cadwell it's always wet so, under the trees in the same bit so i get that, that yeah it's just an extended version. Oh, that's it. Thanks very much for that. All right. Top man. All right. I'll speak to you soon. That's another episode done and dusted. I shall keep going down my contacts list and finding people to ring to interview for YouTube. And hopefully, hopefully, it's not too long before we can go ride some motorbikes around some racetracks. If you enjoyed the video, like it and subscribe. Let me know what you think below. And I'll be back next Sunday with another one. So bye for now.